hello everyone you all are welcome back to my channel all my amazing returning subscriber may god bless every one of you if you never subscribe for this channel please do me a favor and subscribe and hit the bell so that when they drop and you'll be the first person to receive receive uh, okay my people i got the video when i want to drop what do not think concerning this video put it in the comment section please like this video share the video and put your comment there see you guys a purported election must fail in the effort territory we will never validate those who have committed war crimes in our land we will never validate a government that have committed genocide against our people we will never validate a government that sponsors terrorism against their own citizens. We will never validate a government that cares nothing about their own citizens. Only when it is election time, they will come and start forcing the Biafra people to go out there and vote. This Frontland Constitution, which is the 1999, is the grandfather to the Frontland uh, front election that all of you are talking about parading yourself, killing yourself in the streets of Nigeria in the name of campaigning. It is time for our people to learn from the experience of those amongst us who have slaved for Nigeria for many years, especially in the present government. Participating in the previous election have not benefited us. So what makes you think that this particular February 2023 is going to make a difference. We have seen the good Lord Jonathan, we have seen Obasanjo, we have seen also Yaradua. It didn't lead you to anything. The same people that are shouting about P2B today, or Atiku today, or Tinubu today, were the same people who were telling you in 2015 that have seen a Messiah in Buhari, that Buhari have all it takes to come out and they save Nigeria. What they refuse to understand is Nigeria were never designed to progress. Nigeria were never designed for the benefit of the masses, rather, it was designed for what happened in Afghanistan, for Taliban to take over Nigeria. That is the primary uh, structure of Nigeria, and today it is manifesting. And I have to tell the Biafra people today that the time has come for our people to learn from these experiences of the past. And those who claim that they know it all and they know that it will be or Atiku or um, uh, uh, Tinubu or whoever, or whoever, you know, Papaso and Co. have anything to do to Nigeria, they are just deceiving you and lying to yourself. And because of what we have known and the secret we know, which you do not have uh, information to, and you do not have, the, you are not privy to these informations, we have decided that the best interest of Biafra is to not validate Nigeria. And that decision is final. I will understand that the constitution of Nigeria is dead. The laws of Nigeria is dead. Nigeria no longer respect their own law, their own law court. And when you, when the court gave a gave decision or verdict in favor of certain individual the government that be, which is the Fulani government, will always, their own decision will always prevail. So the government or individuals in the government has become the law. And we can no longer validate such nonsense and such evil. In a country where court will rule something and the government will say no. And then, or in a country where you will go into election and at the end of the day, the court will be the one that will decide who win the election and who lost the election. It has happened in Imo State. Today it has happened in Oshun State also. And it is going to happen and will continue to happen. The electorate is not the one deciding the fate of the people in Nigeria. Rather, the court that are made up of made up of a full and new judges. So for this reason and numerous reasons, we have decided that the 2023 general election can never ever take place in Biafra territory. And it is time of our people to learn and not always allow when the rain starts falling on you, you start running outside or running, looking for a way to, you know, to, sh to shelter yourself. This very election will once again give you 
an executive president, that is for those going into the election, that will have the farewell to come to your land and appropriate your resources. And then also, you know, send Fulanese who will come for bloodshed. The, the president will do everything to serve the interests of the Fulanese. And I want you to understand today that in APC, you have Fulani who is representing you. In PDP, you have a Fulani man who is representing them. You In P2B's party, you have a Fulani man who is also representing them in the Labour Party. And they have been able to fix themselves in all the political parties. So if this one lose, this one win. If this one lose, the other one win. And what it means to them is that whoever loses the election, it is win-win for Fulanese. The only people that did not have candidates in those political parties are the Yorubas and the Igbos. And the war is between the Fulani and the rest of Nigeria. And that is exactly what we are doing today. I want to remind you also that during the appetite in South Africa, the effectiveness of the no election found expression in June of 1976. The youth uprising in Soweto, South Africa, youth got tired of being uh, taught and instructed in their schools in a language that wasn't their mother's tongue and the language of uh, repression. They extended this uh, no election or boycott of schools to boycott of the election. It was only after the June 1967, the Soweto uprising, that the world joined them in their demand. And the rest is history. And I want to tell you today that we are already there. Where after this 25th of February, the world will join Biafra to talk about it. And I want to share the news today to the Biafra people of the first international media uh, 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 interview I granted today lasted for about four to five hours. And it is indeed a groundbreaking interview, which is going to be on media in few days time. I will not announce the media house at this point, but I want everybody to wait until you are going to watch that particular interview in the media. It's very, very important. We are going to stream it once it is out. But the interview was very successful, and those who came to interview me now understand Nigeria better. They also understand their France better. And going forward, they will be pushing for the interest of those who have fallen victim of this evil entity. And that is a promise that I'm giving Biafra today, and it's a success that we have recorded. So I will wait for that particular interview to speak for itself. And I want to inform Biafra again that historically, it is proven that the necessary tool for both active and passive resistance and need. I don't need to mention many nations that have used this particular approach that we're using today because we have researched very well. They have applied the boycott or no election, means expressing and achieving their demand for freedom. And I want to tell you people today that no matter how you are being challenged, threatened by the Nigeria state, we must stand on our ground and make this particular legitimate demand that the only election that will be allowed in Biafra territory will be the referendum. It is going to be only the referendum. Now, in order to achieve this, the Nigeria experience with the election boycott since 1964 tells the same story of what is happening today, but there have been history and Jews will teach you to go to school and uh, learn this history in the school. And I want to inform you today, my people, we have the moral and the religious obligation to make these uh, sacrifices that we are making today. And if you are part of this sacrifice, you are making history. For our future generation, please they blame us for the in inability and our inactions that we are standing under a shade today is possible only because somebody somewhere did something 
where I am today, people died for this particular freedom, and I am doing the same thing for my people. I want you to understand that for us to, to achieve this particular no election in the African territory, there are measures that we have put in place. And those measures is the most important aspect of this particular State of the Nation address today, which I want dear friends to listen to. But before I do that, I would like to recommend and thank and appreciate few individuals for the very first time during this Biafra State of the Nation press briefing. I am going to recognize individuals. And these individuals are no other people than one. I would like to appreciate Ikenga Imo. Ikenga Imo for his persistent calling on the release of Mazin and Bikanu. I want to commend him and I want to tell him to stay very strong. We know that uh, Imo State Governor, the, admi the administrator of Fulani, has been on his neck trying everything and every means possible to assassinate him. He will not succeed. He will not succeed even though uh, Ikenga Imo is running for election in Nigeria that is not taking place. But for the fact that he has deemed it fit to publicly call for the release of Mazin Amikano, I am recognizing him this evening and appreciate the courage and the resoluteness in him. He has called for the release of Mazin Amikano not once, not twice. The next person is Soludo of Anambra State. Irrespective of our differences, irrespective of our opinions and all that, Soludo. I have to commend you this evening for two issues that you have done. Two things. One is calling for the release of Mazin and the Kanu. Two is that you remove the taxation, that the inhuman taxation that you imposed on Anambra people. I commend you for that particular because I called on you to retrace your step on this taxation and you're listening to that. And today you have, you have removed the taxation you impose on a number of people. So I commend you for these two particular things you've done. And then that is not to say that I am validating whatever you are doing in Nigeria because even if you remove the taxation, you have not changed anything in a number of states. There is no hospital, there is no road, there is no security, and the name is endless. And then the third person is Reverend Fadambaka. I have to commend Fadambaka for also calling for the release of Mazi Namdekano, and he continued to call for that even when he is under threat. So for Ambaka, the Biafra people say, I should tell you that we appreciate you and thank you, and Lord will continue to give you the courage and the power to always speak for those who are voiceless. Now, in order to actualize the no election in Biafra land and restore Biafra, I want Dear friends, to pay attention to this particular special announcement. Very, very important. Very, very important. In order to implement the stop of Nigeria election in Biafra land, the Biafra people have decided that we are going to implement the following mechanisms. One, on the 23rd day of February 2023, that will be sit at home. Two, on the 24th day of February 2023, that will be locked down in entire Biafra territory. Three, on the 25th day of February 2023, Biafra land will be under lock and key. On the 26th of February 2023, Biafra land will be sealed and will be under lock and key. There will be no movement of chicken. On the 27th of February 2023, Biafra land will be under total lock and key. On the 28th of February 2023, Biafra land will be under lock and key. And I want Biafra to understand that this particular date and days is still subject to review. The review in the sense that 
the seat at home may be cut off at any point in time. In addition to the to the affirmation date, there will be imposition of curfew in two of those days. And I want people to pay attention attentively on the 24th and on the 25th of uh, February 2023. In addition to sit at home, there will be six to six coffee in a certain areas. And listen and pay attention to those areas that this coffee will be affected. There will be an imposition of curfew in the following areas. All federal roads leading to Ebony, Enugu, and Imo State. And I want everybody to understand that this particular curfew, which is going to be on the 24th, in addition to sit at home, and on the 25th, in addition to, to sit at home, will be implemented in towns like Okiwe. Okiwe will observe, in addition to sit at home, a coffee. Owerri, Owerri in Imo State a province will observe curfew from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. in addition to sit at home. Olo will observe curfew from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. on the 24th and on the 25th. Abakaliki in Eboi province will observe a curfew in addition to the sit at home. Enugu Metropolis will observe this curfew in addition to the sit at home. This curfew is on the 24th and on the 25th of February 2023. I want the others to understand that on these days mentioned, it will be an open war between Biafra and Nigeria because we are fighting to protect our life, our property, our villages, our culture and value. So anybody who Nigeria government sent to come and fight Biafra, we will engage you. Let this particular announcement go very viral for everybody to know that on the 24th and on the 25th of February 2023, in addition to sit at home on these days, we are having curfew in Imo State, mostly in Imo State. This curfew will be in Okiwe, Owere, Olu, Abakaliki, Enugu Metropolis. Anybody who the Nigeria government want to use to blackmail Biafra, you will not be there to tell the story because we know what they do to people who disobey these things because they know that this order is always something that really pinches their skin, and we are going to use it until Biafra exit Nigeria. We want you to understand that uh, the, the current uh, uh, jihad, financial jihad going on in Nigeria, you know, trying to cripple everything we do in Biafra land will be over. We will scale through it and Biafra people will survive it. I want to also announce the provinces where this election will be back. Abakaliki, there will be no election in Abakaliki province in Biafra. There will be no election in Afikbo. There will be no election in Oji River. There will be no election in Enugu. There will be no election in Osuka. There will be no election in Owere. There will be no election in Olu. There will be no election in Okiwe. There will be no election in Aba. There will be no election in Umahia. There will be no election in Newe. There will be no election in Onicha. There will be no election in Oka. There will be no election in Abo. There will be no election in, uh, in Wari. There will be no election in Uweli. There will be no election in Asaba, which is Ababa in Biafra. There will be no election in Yenegua. There will be no election in, in Aruda. There will be no election in Degema. There will be no election in Ibocha. There will be no election in Calabar. There will be no election in Oboja. There will be no election in Eket. There will be no election in Uyo. There will be no election in Kote Pene. There will be no election in Anan. There will be no election in Aruchi. 
There will be no election in Benin. There will be no election in Idoma. There will be no election in Igala. All these places, 31 provinces of Biafra, there will be no Nigeria election come 25th day of February 2023. I want to thank Biafras today who have struggled to join this uh, State of the Nation briefing and make sure that this announcement that are passed here spread very wide and goes viral for every Biafras to follow. We have many days ahead of us to make sure that this information goes viral. In addition to this, remember that from the 15th of February 2023, Nigeria will go under very, very serious chaotic situation because we have all the intels of what most of those people trying to, you know, cause confusion in the